The member from Redfern Nipissing Pembroke for member statements. Craft Hockeyville is back, and the ten finalists have been named. Cobden, in my riding, is one of them. Cobden is the community, as my friend the late Harold Dobson used to say, was without a doubt the centre of the universe. The Hockeyville Committee has made them a most compelling case for why Cobden and its Astrolabe Arena should be named Craft Hockeyville 2017. You can view the video at khv2017.ca. Cobden is a wonderful community with a population of about 1,000, situated on Highway 17 between Pembroke and Renfrew. It is near Cobden where Samuel de Champlain lost his astrolabe while exploring the Ottawa River. It was lost until 1867 when it was found near what is now appropriately named Astrolabe Lake. It's also the home of Mussy, the mysterious monster of Muskrat Lake. Perhaps less famous than the Loch Ness Monster, the legend of Mussy is no less fascinating. Numerous sightings have been made, but unfortunately no photographic evidence is available. I urge you to get up there and see if you can capture an image of Mussy yourself. <laughs> Voting will take place on March the 12th and 13th. I urge every member of this legislature to inform their staff, constituents and friends and support Cobden for the title of Craft Hockeyville. Vote early and vote often. I want to congratulate and thank Chris Plo, Jerry McIntyre, Ted Barron and the Ottawa Valley Thunder, as well as Matt LeMay, the videographer, for putting together Cobden's bill, bid. I also want to congratulate and thank the communities of Pembroke, Renfrew, Deep River, Beechburg, and Madawaska Valley for also submitting bids. You'll have another opportunity th next year. Thank you. I, I got to stop swimming in that lake. I'm scaring people. <laughs> member statements. The member from Timiskaming Cochrane. Speaker, I'd like to take this opportunity to talk for a few minutes about a, a small firm of my. Uh, Riding, uh, one of my neighbors actually, Lease Wood Products. And uh, Lease Wood Products takes shavings and puts them in bags, shavings from our local uh, planing mill, puts them in bags, and they are distributed throughout Ontario to uh, horse farms and other people. And it's a family business. Uh, Bruce helped his kids out, helped Andrea and Jason, and uh, it's a thriving little business. But it has the problems that other businesses in the province share and in the riding. And I'd like to explain one of them. So in 2008, this little business started up and they used 9,000 kilowatt hours of electricity a month. Where this is going. And the bill was $984.51. In 2016, they used 12,000 kilowatts. So that's a third of an increase because they employ more people. It's a growing little business. Okay, but the bill, $5,282. Wow. Now, what the leases want to know, and what we want to know is why should, it's an intergenerational business, but now it seems with this new liberal program that the second and third and fourth generations are going to be paying for it, and they don't even know if they're going to get the discount speaker. They need some answers. Thank you. Thank you. Further members, the member from Durham. Thank you, Speaker. I rise today to share with you an inspiring story about Jacob Ralston, a young boy who resides in Oshawa. At the age of only eight, eight years old, Jacob was diagnosed with severe inflammatory bowel disease, later changed to Crohn's. After undergoing several hospital visits, Jacob approached his mother with a wish to create child-friendly treatment rooms at the hospital for six, sick children. Jacob's overall goal is to update the outpatient treatment room so that children can have a comforting and an uplifting environment that promotes healing. He plans to install iPads to each treatment chair, bringing bubble tube machines for some of the younger children, and also pur purchase light covers to replace the harsh lights with pictures of the sky. Mr. Speaker, Jacob's efforts have been absolutely incredible. I am proud to share that he has raised $30,182 out of his $60,000 goal towards this project. In addition, he continues to bring the community together through his fundraising initiative. In December, I had the pleasure of attending Jacob's 13th birthday Bonanza celebration with a drop-in event open to the public. Jacob hadn't had a birthday party in three years because of it, he was so sick. It was amazing to see everyone come together for such a great cause. 
Despite all of the health complications and treatments he deals with on a daily basis, Jacob is determined to make a difference in our society. Mr. Speaker, I'd like to thank Jacob for being an inspiration to us all. Please join me in further congratulating Jacob Ralston on his outstanding effort. And please make an effort to come and say hi to this incredible young man. Jacob thank is you. in the house. Thank you, Jacob. Further member statements. The member from Lambton, Kent, Middlesex. Well, thank you very much, Mr. Speaker. Today we are celebrating International Women's Day, and I would like to take this opportunity to recognize the invaluable work being done by the Women's Rural Resource Centre in Strathroy. Their dedicated team supports women who are living with violence in their lives. They help not only to keep these women and their children safe, but also to equip them to make good decisions for themselves and their families. Recently, they have expanded their programming to include family and children's counselling, advocacy work and food security. In honour of International Women's Day, the Women's Rural Resource Centre will hold an open house on Friday and I would encourage anyone in the community to attend. This will be an opportunity to learn more about their excellent work and to meet their wonderful staff, volunteers and community partners. Visitors will also learn about their community garden, which flourishes under, under the theme, The Unstoppable Garden. For those of us who are familiar with this organization, we know that the work they do runs year-round. But on this day in particular, for the essential work of Strathroy's Women's Rural Resource Centre, I wish to sincerely thank and congratulate their board of directors, Executive Director Corey Allison, their staff and volunteers. Thank you. Thank you. Further member statements? The member from Windsor West. Thank you, Speaker. The work of interpreters, literacy instructors, audiologists, and speech language, speech language pathologists is vital to people who are deaf and hard of hearing and all those that access the services of the Canadian Hearing Society. When families rallied at Queen's Park to save provincial schools for the deaf, Canadian Hearing Society interpreters were among those who worked tirelessly to ensure that no one went without service. They played a key role in raising awareness on this important issue. Each and every day, workers at the Canadian Hearing Society play a vital role to so many in Windsor and throughout Ontario. It's time we valued their important contributions to the people of this province. Four years without a contract is four years too long. It's time for CHS to return to the bargaining table and provide workers at the Canadian Hearing Society with the respect that they deserve. Thank you, Speaker. Thank you, okay. Further members, a statement the member from Kingston and the Islands. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. It's a great pleasure to rise this afternoon to speak on International Women's Day. As a mother to three daughters, I'm proud of the work that our government is doing to demonstrate that young women in Ontario can do anything they set their minds to. Roughly 2,400 years ago, Plato wrote about women in the Republic and said that they had the right to first access. And why is that important at that time, or even now for that matter? Because he recognized the power of the woman through her ability to give birth and her decision about that life and whether or not she was going to nurture it. And while there is no doubt that we have come a long way since then, have we come far enough? I would expect not. Many Indigenous cultures and First Nations groups recognize the power of women and revere them through their ability to give birth. Mr. Speaker, my wish on this International Women's Day is that each one of us succeeds in building up our communities in such a way that we all advance, protect and nurture women and in the province as a whole. We need to create an Ontario where no woman or girl needs to live in fear. An Ontario where girls know their rights and feel a sense of hope about their futures. We need to look around, and each one of us needs to lift the lives of other women along the way. Every single one of us is responsible. Let us carry forward the determination and goodwill for women on this International Women's Day until this time next year. Thank you. Thank you. For the member, Stavis, the member from Nipissing. Thank you and good afternoon, Speaker. I rise uh, today to offer congratulations and appreciation to Lucio Pavone, Chippewa Secondary School's principal. Mr. Pavone was recently awarded the Canada Central Region National Principal of Music, uh, uh, a music Award. This award recognizes the efforts made by principals in support of music education in schools across Canada. 
Lucio's passion and dedication, coupled with his love for music and education, made him the clear choice for the award. His vision and collaboration with teachers at Chippewa Secondary resulted in the expansion of the school's music department. As part of the award, Chippewa Secondary School will be receiving $1,500 to go towards their music program. This money will help ensure the ongoing development and growth of an essential part of the education process. Speaker, on a personal note, uh, Lucio's mother, Lena, made our wedding cake 30 years ago. Their father, Pe his father, Pepe, uh, is a lifelong supporter of the Italian club, the Davidi Club in North Bay. And I again would like to congratulate and thank Lucio Pavoni for his dedication and devotion to his students and the continued success of the school's music program. Thank you. For the member Stavis, the member from Etobicoke Lakeshore. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. And as we celebrate International Women's Day here in Ontario, I'd like to recognize the important work of the Canadian Federation of University Women, CFUW, and their Etobicoke branch. CFUW Etobicoke was established in 1952 with only 10 members, and today they boast a membership of over 300. Together, this group of exceptional women is working to raise awareness of social issues. I recently had the opportunity to attend one of CFUW's events, the Valentine's Stop the Violence Breakfast with the Honourable Deepika Damerla, Minister of Seniors Affairs. Minister Damerla remarked on the important work groups like CFUW do to promote women's issue, issues and especially issues surrounding women seniors. At this event, the keynote speaker was Judith Wall, the Executive Director of Advocacy for the Elderly, who talked to us about the risks that women seniors face and the specific factors uh, that are at play and how we can fight them. On this very important International Women's Day, Mr. Speaker, I want to thank women like Judith Wall for their ongoing advocacy for, for women and women seniors, and of course CFUW Etobicoke for bringing strong women together to effect change in our community. And the beneficiary of this year's uh, event was Ernestine Women's Shelter in Etobicoke that also does spectacular work day in, day out, helping women in need in our community. Thank you. Further member statements, the member from Stormont Dundas and South Glengarry. Thank you, Speaker. I'm proud to rise uh, on behalf of my constituents in Stormont Dundas and Glengarry for the work they've done over the last uh, six months on the, the school closure issue. Um, I look around at, at some of the other writings, it immediately rallied our community against this unfair closure of, of uh, 12 schools that um, historically have been in place, some of them before uh, 1800. And, you know, these are, these are really a big part of the school. Uh, when I look at the stats uh, as far as re replies back to the board, uh, we were head and shoulders above uh, the neighboring uh, Writings and in, in returns. We, we, uh, replies of over close to a thousand, where other schools were in the 30 range. Wow. So, really uh, brought the community together. Uh, they worked together, basically, neighbor to neighbor, to look at a plan that the government could have put in force and to stop the, the closure. Not of all. I mean, we're not arguing that some of the schools do have an issue and maybe have to be closed, but especially the high schools. They are the, the heart of the community. Uh, if I look at the, just in my own with the Williamstown Fair, we, we, the, we, um, we need the high schools to provide the volunteers, not only of tomorrow, but of today. Uh, the current uh, programs where they come in, they, they dedicate hours, and generally they turn into not only great citizens, but great volunteers of tomorrow. So I want to uh, re you know, commend my community. Thank you. Thank you. I want to thank all members for their statements. It's therefore 